and host special meetups every year to help build relationships through the community. But due to the pandemic, this year's Coffee with a Cop will be a little different. Joining us to talk more about it, COVID edition, is Chief Mark Stainbrook. Chief, good morning. Good morning, Lauren. How are you this morning? I'm excellent. Let's cheers. Cheers. Okay, so this is our, now you have a new cup. <laughs> As you suspected, you were right all along. We'd get along, yeah, I, Chief. I, I got this from my kids. I got this from my kids. You think they were trying to tell me something? Probably. They usually are. <laughs> well, this is really a, a great event, and I think so important right now and pertinent. But can you tell us how the Coffee with a Cop got started with the Harbor Police Department? Sure. Coffee with a Cop started in 2011 with uh, the Hawthorne Police Department nationally. It's kind of spread and we, over the last two years, did four Coffee with a Cop events, one at the airport, uh, one at Broadway Pier, and at Starbucks at Lanning, and also at the Shelter Island boat launch ramp when it opened, uh, so people could come down and see our boats, have a cup of coffee with us, and get to know us as people. Right, because there's sort of been a disconnect or a mistrust with, with some members of the community. And obviously, we've, we've been in a time recently, 2020, just as crazy as it is, added social unrest. I, mean, I would imagine that these types of meetings were more important than ever. Well, if you think about most of the time when you meet a police officer, it's not at the best time, is it? You might be getting pulled over or called, we're called for service. And so it's something about having a cup of coffee with somebody, you can actually develop a relationship with them and talk about issues in kind of a non-confrontational environment um, and kind of good spirit, good cheer. Everything goes better with coffee, right? Even, even me. <laughs> so how have your officers responded during this time? What have, what have you noticed? Was this really a, an emphasis for more training and for a better relationship building? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, I, th I think especially with the social unrest part of it, um, I've hired 70 new officers in the last five years or so. So they're really young, idealistic millennials, and they grew up in very diverse communities. Uh, and in San Diego, they don't really, you don't see the types of incidents that are very rare um, that maybe you see in other places. So they were kind of confused about everything they were seeing in the media and social media. Um, but you know what, what we've done, we had a training st stand down day and we talked about um, relationships with the community. We brought in Pastor Brian Bomber from Stand in the Gap, who um, was former San Diego PD officer and now is a pastor in the African-American community to talk about community relationships, to talk about um, his experiences, both being a police officer and a member of the community. Um, and then and then all the technical things on new laws and policies. Uh, of course, we banned the carotid restraint. A lot of things on de-escalation, training officers to go into situations with a mindset to de-escalate whenever possible. And then on things like um, excited delirium and positional asphyxia, some very complicated issues that I, I wanted personally to make sure all my officers were trained and understood um, at the time. And so obviously there's a lot of questions out in the community on a number of different topics, even as it relates to COVID. So you're deciding to push through like, like a lot of other <laughs> sectors of the community and finding ways to do things virtually. So tell us how this coffee with a cop is going to work, how people can sign up and, and have a cup of coffee with you. Well, I just noticed through, um, our, our work and, and people going to work that there's a sense of isolation, isn't there? There's a sense of we're not as connected as we were before. So, um, you know, I've noticed people doing virtual picnics, virtual lunches together. And so we kind of thought, hey, we could do virtual coffee with a cop um, and we'll be putting out information on our, our website, how to sign up and have, have a virtual cup of coffee uh, with officers in the future. Okay, so keep an eye out on the website, sign up for that. Do you have a time frame of when this is going to start? Oh, well, I'd say in the next couple of weeks, we'll, we'll put things out, something out before, before Christmas. Okay, and Mark Mathis, being as, as lovely as he is, wanted to know who was bringing the donuts. <laughs> you know, I, I asked my first cop, how is it that the donut thing got associated with police officers? But <laughs> You know, there weren't 24 hour coffee shops in, in 1989 when I became a police officer. So, oh, no. oh you went to the Dunkin' Donuts because right. it was 24 7. And I think that's how the association associated. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, you don't look like you're having too many donuts. It's okay. I, we have donuts here every morning, so news anchors get the same wrap. It's okay. And, uh, you and might have a lot of cops visiting you then. <laughs> but, uh, and coffee so tomorrow, does um, and I heard you talking about uh, with Jesse and Tati about uh, the one uh, toy drive for the young lady and the family, yes. which is awesome. I just want to mention tomorrow we're we're doing uh, shop with a cop a little differently this year. I know you guys co have covered it on KUFI. Yeah. But we'll be at Perkins Middle School with the San Diego Harbor Police Foundation, and we'll uh, we've selected a number of children to receive toys. Santa will be there, hot chocolate, uh, and everything. All thanks to our our great uh, Harbor Police Foundation. So we really appreciate them and our relationship with Perkins Elementary School in Barrio Logan. That's wonderful. I love hearing these stories and we'll make sure to, to get out there and cover that as well because it's uh, a really important time to spread some added cheer this year. Well, those are the kind of things where we can really develop relationships with people in the community and, and, and remind them that cops are people too. Cops are human too. We're out there trying to do a job in sometimes tough conditions, tough circumstances. Yeah. But I ask all my officers, you know, treat people with empathy, treat them with respect that they can change, um, they can't always change everything, but they can influence the world around them one relationship at a time, one contact at a time, um, especially over the course of their career. So um, I, I just ask them to, uh, you know, have a good attitude every day and go out and treat people well. Well, we are so thankful for your service, for your leadership with those officers. That's a, a wonderful advice and um, best of luck with uh, Coffee with a Cop. Cheers. Thank you, Thank Chief. You, cheers. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Have a wonderful Christmas if we don't see you before then. Hey, hey Lauren, I heard you're a diver, so yeah. I want to invite our dive team sometime when this COVID thing blows over. And you, please, you, please. You what a police, what it is to dive with police officers. How, how I would dive. love to do that. I'm going to be uh, the wimp that needs the thickest suit, but I'm there. We'll wait till the weather's a little warmer. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> no, but for really, keep, keep in touch, and uh, I will I will definitely take you up on that offer. Okay, let's do that. Thank you, guys. Have a Merry Christmas. Take care, Chief. You too.